down the back. Oh, that, that's exactly right. Yeah. Al, let's take a short yeah, break. Al Fullerton, no excuse for having the blinkers on as you walk your way down <laughs> that gangway. Um, up next, though. Larry, Al Fullerton here. Ali on Mark is sticking with Copper there. Um, you know, certainly this is on the back of it, and it's been quite well flagged. There, there, there are rumours of the, the uh, 2011 uh, supply constraints, and, and couple that with this ongoing uh, Chinese growth thematic, uh, it's really keeping Copper well supported at these, at these record highs. Yeah, I, I still think uh, we're going to see Copper uh, extend its gains only for the things that you just mentioned, and if not more. I mean, you can't ration demand. That's the problem. You might be able to ration the supply, but the demand for copper, uh, with the slight expansion we're going to see in the U.S. and the bigger expansion we'll see in some of the other nations, uh, copper is going to be uh, much higher than it is today. Mm. Larry Alpha Lydon here again, just, just sticking with oil there. What are the, what are the, the real sort of near-term catalysts? I know that a lot of analysts are quite bullish on, on oil, certainly Q1 next year. We may see it up towards a $100 level. Do you agree with these analysts? And, and, and what do you see as, uh, as certainly the nearer-term catalyst for, uh, for oil to get through that uh, $100 mark? Mm. If we go back to 2.5% growth, if we keep our unemployment rate below 10%, if we're adding jobs, a mm. uh, $100 barrel is definitely in question, especially when you look at uh, all the other commodities, looking at um, <clears throat> the metals, looking at the uh, agriculturals, the uh, wheat, soybeans, corn, everything's up. Uh, oil uh, it will easily rally to $100 a barrel. That's not a question at all, given the scenario that all the other commodities mm. can... With my guest host, he's been with me all through the hour, Al Fullerton, Senior Broker at Allium Financial Markets. Al, you know, bringing it all back home now for investors, uh, a sense that things would be nice if they moved higher to close out the year. Uh, today, what's going to drive your trade? Because, you know, China's still, you know, Shanghai watching is always ever present. It, it, it is, yeah. yeah, and especially in light of obviously the the uh, the data out tomorrow, mm. the, the possibility of, uh, of some rate changes this mm. uh, this weekend. Look, it does remain a, a trader's market. It certainly remains quite volatile. Mm. I, I do certainly believe that if we combine, uh, you know, the, the, this uh, positive the U.S. sentiment on these uh, Obama tax cuts, mm. I think uh, as we run into the year end, I do feel there may be a bit, uh, a bit more, a uh, bit more on the bullish side than than uh, than on the bearish side. What sectors um, are you liking, therefore, to be playing that? that look, that I, 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 I remain in the material space. Right. I, I still like that copper play. We, we've been speaking about it today. Right. It remains well supported on 2011 constraints. Um, you know, there's some great opportunity there for, for, for some trading in, in, in the smaller cap space. There. So, okay, the smaller cap uh, one to watch because I was about to ask. You know, sure. is Rio wise to sort of ramp up copper production? Production, yeah. not go down the route that's been the theme this week of Riversdale and coking coal maybe boosting that part of the portfolio but at quite yeah. a price when you look at some of the sales that have gone through from Riversdale itself yes. to competitors. Look I think that I think it, uh, if you look at Rio they've obviously flagged the fact that their copper production is going to be about 15 percent weaker in yeah. 2011 Why? Uh, from lack of quality of what they can actually put out of the ground there. Now they're actually uh, I suppose reiterating the fact that they, uh, they, that they feel there will be those supply constraints going forward especially from the development. Is that good enough for investors there. to hear that? Well, look, I think Mongolia is a great place to start looking at there. I think we've seen some very interesting players coming out of Mongolia, and I think we'll continue to see Mongolia on the map as, uh, as a place for, for, for mining exploration. Um, and, uh, and, and we will see when we, West Africa, someone like a Riversdale, ha have done well. The, the, yeah. the coal market, the energy market, and look, they're in bed with, uh, I think with, with um, mm. uh, Tata from India, and, and I think that, you know, certainly the, the Indian demand there for, for, for coal uh, will remain. And apparently but, it, it was one that leaked the story of Rio's interest. Okay, well, you know, well, someone reports forward that or, or that uh, yeah. Wikilinks or one of those uh, Wikilinks. But look, yeah. I, I, I remain, to, to focus on this thematic, this, this Asian growth thematic mm. for 2011, it's a time now where you, you either you, know, you can take a position for 2011, there might be some window dressing going on there, mm. um, maybe some institutional buying. The market seems relatively well supported, although lacking some sort of direction from offshore markets. Mm. Um, so I think you look at those thematics there, you look at the, the copper thematic, you look at something like a uranium play there, um, mm. you know, in terms 
terms of this this uh, nuclear power plant, this cleaner energy thematic that we're going to see moving forward there. Are all your eggs in one basket or are you diversifying your portfolio or are you heavily weighted into cash? Look, uh, no, well, we, we have actually been uh, relatively long cash mm. uh, at the latter half of last month, mm. um, waiting for uh, some sort of normality to return to the markets there. Mm. I think now we certainly are going to see uh, more overweight material space, as I said, mm. exposure to um, that, that, uh, that Asian growth thematic. I think the ag space is, is again, uh, something which gives you that, that, that Asian exposure. So while the eggs in one basket in terms of we're looking for the developing world demand story, we are relatively hedged across numerous sectors, um, be, it, uh, be it the fertiliser, be it uh, an ISTEC pivot, be it uh, Thunderella resources on the uranium copper. China going to come visiting fishing next year down under. Will they catch anything? Will they catch anything? I think we'll see an ongoing Chinese IPO landscape. I can't see that going anywhere. It's going to be a sprat or a trout. A what are they going to catch? A big boy or just a little minnow? Look, I think I think they're actually the, the demand will increase. I think that there's going to be more of these companies going forward. I think be cautious when you, you do have Chinese companies listing over here. We've seen uh, uh, numerous over the decade where, where the, when the decision maker is offshore in China right. and the person who writes the checks is in China, it can uh, it can be a what different. What space will it be in? Will it be in copper? Will it be in iron? Or will it be in what? It'll be it, it'll, it'll be across the board. It'll be I think iron ore is certainly one to watch. There, I think right. it certainly will remain copper. Yeah. Uh, magnesium r remains interesting across the board. China. Don't forget that name, 2011, that'll be the story. Take your pick, your sport for choice, Al. Great insights. Thanks Thank so you, much. Carson. Always value it. Cheers. Al Fullerton there, senior broker at Allium Finance. You know the hour is up.